Hi, Gabriel. Hello, Steve. Always so, a pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure. So we've had our discussion in Portuguese. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. still struggling, but one day I'm going to nail that uh, Portuguese, you know. I think uh, it's going to be a matter of just a couple weeks for you. Well, just, I don't like, know, just like a a basically weeks. diving it's, into the content. Well, it's, and... it's just in any language, what you have to do is you have to develop you know, like new habits. Mm -hmm. So when I first started learning Portuguese, you know, I got a hold of a book. And you know how uh, you know Spanish differs from Portuguese. So you got a whole bunch of Spanish terms, you know, word, verbs, nouns, whatever. And here's the Portuguese thing. That was useless because you can't. <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah. That's, that's hopeless. And then I got living language. I had a bunch of disjointed phrases, and I was. I remember my, you know, running, jogging, and listening to it. And then I went mm -hmm. to Portugal, and the minute I opened my mouth, they switched to English. Because uh, you, you know when you travel, and the Portuguese are not bad at English actually, they're a lot yeah, better they're very than the good. Spaniards. They're yeah. very good, and uh, and if you go somewhere and you're lousy in the language, they're going to switch to the to, to English because they're there to communicate. They're not there yeah. to teach you their language, right? Unless they're very nice. Uh, so, but then after a while, I realized I just have to do so much listening and so much reading that I slowly start to develop a different set of habits. So when I'm speaking Portuguese, I'm not thinking of Spanish. You know, how, how do you say that in Portuguese? No, 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 no. It has to kind of come out as a natural Portuguese reflex. I'm not yet, there yet, but I, I'm better than I used to be. At any rate, and, so the, and this brings well, up. I think this, you're very good. Like you can, you get your point across. Yeah. Everybody understands what what you're uh, expressing, so that yeah. that's the most important. But so. the, the the trap with that is, even if I speak the worst Portuñol, they still understand me. Yeah. So the the fact that they understand me is not necessarily a big compliment. Anyway, never mind. So, so um, my question is: so we both like to study different languages. We're mm -hmm. ex constantly exploring new languages uh, with the result that we leave some languages on the, on the stovetop there that uh, aren't quite done yet. <laughs> so how do you balance that? Like how do you, how do you continue to explore new languages and, and yet are, do you worry about the languages you left behind that are kind of half finished and that you're going to go back down to zero or, or how do you maintain them? Th th I think that's just such a wonderful topic because uh, yeah, I'm always like, often I'll be, you know, focusing primarily on specific languages and dabbling in, in a ton of new ones and, um, and then go back and be like, oh, hey, you know what? Like I, uh, I watched this video in German and German is one of my, my good languages mm -hmm. and I forgot so much already. So I go, I go back and I focus a bit more on it. So I, go, I definitely go through phases and mm -hmm. depends on my, my goals at the time. Right. So Currently, I'm going through a phase in which I'm just f reviewing a lot of the languages that I that I already know and uh, that I'm eternally learning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, but uh, as I mentioned to you in a, in another video, I've been learning uh, some Polish and mm -hmm. Finnish mm -hmm. and some Hebrew too. But it's just uh, <laughs> Hebrew is a tough language. It's a tough. Yeah, I tried it. I gave up. <laughs> well, a... I'll go back to it, but I temporarily <laughs> jumped off to Arabic. But anyway. Nice, nice. Yeah. So basically, uh, I may go uh, and commit to just reaching perhaps a B1 in Polish mm -hmm. in the near future. Right. And, uh, and something that excites me is the fact that like I did a challenge for a one month challenge to, to finish the Polish tree on Duolingo. Mm -hmm. And I, I did other stuff too. I did, you know, some, some uh, uh, text and audio on, on link and off of link and... Uh, so, and then I just kind of totally left it. Mm -hmm. And then it's very exciting to see that like a year later, or I don't, I don't know how long ago this was, I still, like, it still sounds familiar to me and I recognize a lot of stuff and I'm able to understand a lot of stuff. Um, I don't think I, I got to, I, I think I may have been at A2 at that point, but, uh, mm -hmm. but there's still, and like, of course, like knowing Russian helps Right, but it's still, you know, of course, uh, a different language. So I think that, uh, uh, yeah, definitely go through phases, and I try to, you know, look back and uh, and review the languages that I, languages that I do know, right. and uh, even Portuguese, because like, I'll, sometimes I'm just not satisfied with my with my vocab in Portuguese. Right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I just feel like I need to 
uh, read a bit more. And, and the other day, actually something really funny is that like in one of her videos, uh, I corrected you when you said mesclar. And I mm -hmm. said, oh, no, it's misturar. And normally misturar. that's what I'll say, misturar. Yeah. And it's actually a word in Portuguese, I, but I had forgotten that it was. What's that? I mean, like mesclar is a word? Mesclar. Oh. And, and then like, I have like a million comments of people that, and that they're like, hey, Gabriel, like, I, you forgot well, Portuguese. <laughs> well, that's why I've got this book. I don't have it in front of me. Where the, the person, and he's a very famous, he writes about the brain and how the brain learns. He's a, I don't know if he's Portuguese or Brazilian. Uh -huh. But he wrote exprim, exprimir instead of expressar. And I have a tendency to say exprimir because of the influence of French. Mm -hmm. And of course, in, Sp in Spanish, it's expressar, you know. And, but he wrote exprimir, say, and I made a note of that exprimir. because that was... So it's possible that that does exist, not to squeeze a lemon, ju you know, juice out of a lemon, but <laughs> to express yeah, yourself. Exprimir, but, exprimir né? Uh, you know, like, to be, to be really honest, of course, like, I, yeah. I, uh, it is my mother language you know like right. I, I do but at the same time it's just like there's just so much about portuguese that i don't right. know of that course I, you forget, I can forget things in english I don't know. but i also wanted to comment you know so i'm in the same situation as you so some of my rules are like if i am not at b2 in a language mm -hmm. i i don't feel that i have that language so mm -hmm. i would say that my top language is to b2 and b2 is to, to me b1 means that uh, it, I, I the other day i said this a2 means I can say things, but I don't understand very well. B2, I understand, but I can't speak very well because you've moved ahead now. So I'm yes. starting to understand the podcast, but I trip all over my tongue trying to say anything. Like, I don't speak as well as I would like to. I, yeah. I end up where I can understand better than I can speak. When you're at, in my opinion, when I'm at B2, I can do both. Mm -hmm. But, and to, I tend to use my mini stories at Link a lot. So if I like, I'm going to have a conversation, I don't know, in Polish, I'll go listen to those Polish mini stories and it's all still there. It's almost like having a bit of memory parked in a database in the mini stories. And when you go back to it, it's like rediscovering an old friend. It's fun. It's and fun. yeah, you've dropped a few words, but it rather quickly comes back. But I don't make a, it's not a deliberately deliberate strategy of maintaining those languages. It's if I'm going to need them, I'm going to be interviewed or I, something, then I'll go and refresh it. But otherwise, I just let it sit there. Mm -hmm. And when I need it again, I'll go back there and refresh it. And I'll be a little bit below where I once was. But in my experience, very quickly, I get right back up to where I was. Yeah, I, I think that that's fantastic, especially because I think like, you know, what you said about really needing it, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's what really, also for example, like some, some people have come across it and told me like, Gabriel, like why haven't you pursued C2 in German? And right. I said, because I've never needed it. Like I, I'm, I was quite content with my B2 or maybe right, exactly. C1 if, if that was, you know, and right now because, you know, I'm no longer dating a German girl, like I, I haven't been communicating that much. So like my, you know, like whatever it slipped to, like it's it's good enough for me to yeah. uh, have chats with German people to understand to like watch the the, the video. So it comes down, of course, to the the necessity. And uh, I experienced the same thing, for example, like with the language that I reached a decent level at, but then I let slip significantly because I don't practice it enough. For for instance, Dutch. Mm -hmm. And I do I do the same thing. So for example, like let's say I, I'll I want to have a chat with someone in Dutch. Mm -hmm. I go to Link. Mm -hmm. And I listen to these podcasts, podcasts with uh, Fasuya in, oh, in yeah. Dutch, mm -hmm. and it comes back, and it, mm -hmm. it's it's cool how how fast it comes back, Very and uh, uh, and of course I still need to learn so much uh, of Dutch, but I reached a level that made me happy. You know, the interesting thing is even where I don't have that much of a level, like in in Turkish, I think I'm like at A two. I did have an exit video after I studied Turkish, but I've let it slip, so I've I've lost a lot. So sometimes I'm a bit worried that I'm going to lose too much. So, you know, if I'm going to sit down for a while, I might just read a, I have a book, Turkish, just to flip through the grammar, all right, with a few, little bit of content, whatever. So I'm going through, through that now for the second or the third time. It goes very fast. So it's a bit like if you go somewhere in a car, the first time you go there, you're looking for someone's address. You're going to someone's home. It takes you forever to get there because you're looking for it. The second time you go to that person's home, it's like it took half the time. Even though, in fact, it took 20 minutes in both cases, it seems like it was very fast. And when you review something for the second or third time, it goes very fast. So 
And, and it is sometimes good. I always say, you know, while I don't emphasize grammar and, and I, I emphasize learning through listening and reading and getting used to it and letting the brain gets used, get used to it and the brain will form these patterns and stuff. But you also tend to want to review, once you know something about the language, review some of the grammar uh, rules and examples and uh, that's something you can do time and time again. And so you go back to a language you haven't looked at for a while and you can now flip through that whole grammar book in half an hour. Because there yes. isn't that much there. If you're not <laughs> trying to discover it for the first time, but you're just trying to review things that essentially the brain is already used to, it actually goes very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, uh, you know, it, it's that's really the natural way to learn a language. And that's how we, we learn our uh, mother tongues anyway. Mm -hmm, for, mm -hmm. We, You know, like as a baby, it's not like your mom or, or dad went there and like, hey, let's do some grammar exercises. Let's, you know, let's test you on the verb to be and oh, yeah. present perfect. No, like you through a great exposure, you just knew how to how to say things with exactly. correct grammar by <laughs> the age of three or exactly. whatever. Yeah, you know. ninety percent correct, and and the rest when you get together with people, you pick it up, and you don't certainly don't need your mother to correct you. Yeah, no, absolutely. So it's, I oh. think that's uh, uh, that's the natural way to learn exposure. We're on the Text same knowledge. page. So, Gabriel, we've got to do this again. We'll of do course. it again, hopefully in person, because you live in Vancouver. Yes. <laughs> but right now, of course, we're all uh, sheltering at home or whatever the term is. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to do this again and maybe speak different languages. Of course. Uh, a pleasure. In a few months. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Always a pleasure. Bye -bye.